Stop telling black people to get over their history. Well, I just could not live beside them. I don't feel that they should be oppressed. But I moved here. One of the main reasons was because it was a white community. There were several hundred who congregated on the street in front of the Myers house. And there were those among them who felt strongly enough to throw a rock through the picture window. So recently I posted a short on my YouTube channel. Um, it was about a suburban integration. And what it was is this guy from this documentary called Crisis in Levittown. He went around a community and got various people's reaction to a black family moving into the neighborhood. So of course there were people that were for it. There were people vehemently and violently against to it. And he kind of collected different perspectives. And let me tell you, people were mad. So, for starters, I have to say that, you know, to people's credit, some people were a bit frustrated at watching some of the community members' reaction, saying people should be able to live where they want to live. But then I would get asinine comments that were just factually incorrect, such as this. Horrible news. Home prices decreased. Crime increases. Many facts to this old reaction. And let me tell you this, you racist moron. Um, for one, actually, if they could afford what you can afford, they weren't a part of poverty. A lot of these people moving into those neighborhoods were not criminals. So let's start with the myth of the home prices decreasing. All right, let's unpack this. So back in the time, they actually found that um, diversity within these suburban communities actually increased property values. The reason why is because black people were willing to pay more for properties that they could actually get. So because of that, communities that did have diversity had higher property values. So that whole argument at the time was just complete nonsense. On top of that, a lot of this was just petty. One, one black family moving in is not going to increase crime in your neighborhood. And a lot of these people were not criminals, they just wanted to raise their families in a suburban community. If a Negro family can afford what you can afford, how do you justify your feeling of superiority? Great quote. And, you know, I'm also getting stuff out along the lines of this was 70 years ago. Like, this, this doesn't matter anymore. Well, I wouldn't walk up to somebody and say, hey, the Declaration of Independence doesn't matter. You shouldn't know about that. L the Revolutionary War doesn't matter. You shouldn't learn about that. So going around and saying, hey, slavery doesn't matter, that was 200 years ago. Who the f are you to tell someone that slavery doesn't matter and didn't have an impact at the time and still a lot of the racism that followed slavery has an impact to this day? And the reason why I would say it had an impact is during the Reconstruction period, a lot of black people were let go, of course, because, you know, they were freed. Um, so where did they go? Well, a lot of people had basically nowhere to work because a lot of people wouldn't employ them on the basis that they were black. And during the segregation era, people were turning away employees, potential great employees, potential good customers and loyal customers on the basis of their race. Now, you tell me that doesn't have an impact whatsoever. And we also get into redlining. A lot of people were denied access to the suburbs at the time and were put in rural areas, rural areas. And uh, today this still persists where, you know, rural areas have a high population and density of black people. And you also have to consider that property values down in rural areas and often areas that are, that are, um, have a high population of black people have lower property values, uh, less wealth to go around and because of that lower taxes, uh, lower quality education and everything that happened during the time of segregation, just a couple generations back, is still having implications to this day. And the audacity to turn around and tell these people, hey, all that stuff we did, you know, all that stuff the government did, not necessarily we, I don't blame white people, I blame the government. All the stuff that the government did doesn't matter. Like, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? And to me, it just doesn't stop there. It, it does, in fact, get worse. So I got this other asinine comment that I just, I don't believe you, I guess it's possible, but this sounds utterly ridiculous. I just watched a black say the same shit in 2023 about white people. Now what we are seeing a lot of is this idea of white victimhood. Essentially that racism is starting to flip. That now, 
all these things of bringing up history and all these systemic issues is in fact an attack on white people. So bringing up um, all socioeconomic issues, it's not socioeconomic issues, it's a culture issue. The reason why black people are struggling in their communities is simply because they aren't pulling themselves up by the bootstraps, they aren't putting in the work, they are holding themselves back. And all this systemic crap that has happened in the past has no impact today. That's just libtard nonsense, anti fur talking points. All right? I am a political moderate. I do not side with Democrats. I do not side with Republicans. I like to side with the information that is correct. And I'm not always correct, but I try to get the right information and I try to pull from a lot of sources. But this is concerning that we have a lot of right wing pundits, such as Mark Dice, who is a fucking moron and you shouldn't trust because he's an asshole jerk. Um, that are prompting this idea of anti-white racism. Now, you can be racist towards a white person, right? But we cannot conflate the two because throughout history, a lot of our policymakers have been white and have been getting opportunities and things passed for white people, as well as other minority groups, too. We have to give credit. Certain policies have been put in place to help. But at the end of the day, we have not faced the same degree of problems that black people in this country have historically. So essentially here, I'm not coming from a, a position of a white savior complex. I'm coming from a position of racism is wrong and we need to uh, discuss racism. And racism very much still exists when we have talking points that were brought up in videos from the 1960s being used today. For some Levittowners, the basic issues involved had nothing to do with intermarriage, our property values, loss of status, fear of crime, neighborhood decline, or of being in the minority. They saw it as a test of democracy. What was your reaction to the Myers moving in? Well, I was happy to see this become more of an American community. Socioeconomic issues, poverty, none of that is brought in the equation. Um, this, the standards of education not brought up, you know, and it's, it's unfortunate. And I think it is time for us to change. It is time for us to have a change of perspective and to reevaluate these discussions. So until next time, please hit the like and subscribe. I hope to see you again. Hope this video was informative. If you like the video, please let me know. If you have any disagreements, please comment below. And uh, I'll see you next time.